All right, welcome to the Pararex San Fran Tourism Channel. Our goal is to showcase the top attractions in the San Francisco Bay Area and where to find them. Now today's focus will be on the wonderful neighborhood of Portrayal Hill. Now Portrayal Hill is approximately five miles south of Fisherman's Wharf and approximately two miles south of Union Square. Now what makes Portrayal Hill so special is that it has a lot of hidden gems within the neighborhood, but it has one big hidden gem that you got to know about that's really, really special. One of the, certainly the top hidden treasure in Portrayal Hill and one of the top hidden gems throughout the city. But before we feature it, I'm going to showcase a few other hidden gems uh, in Patrol Hill first, and then we'll get to the main focus of Patrol Hill. Uh, with that being the case, let's get started. Today's weather in San Francisco is 82 degrees Fahrenheit with 42% humidity and 9 mile an hour winds. Today's date is Tuesday, October the, t the 13th, 2020, at 2.15 p.m. Pacific Standard Time. The Petrel Hill Community Garden is one of 42 gardens uh, under the management of the uh, the park and recreational facility in San Francisco. And it's a garden that is managed and grown by volunteers where they can grow produce and ornamental plants for personal use. It's located at 780 San Bruno Avenue at the corner of 20th Street. Before we show you this wonderful garden, they do have a few rules. Uh, first, for starters, no dogs, and you cannot remove any flowers or produce. They do have signage out in front of the entrance of the gate indicating what the garden is about. And so those of you into gardening or just want to see one of the many hidden gems I'm going to show you in Petrero Hill, you can certainly check it out, and we'll show you in a minute. Now, upon entrance, they have uh, several bench seating areas that you can relax, maybe have lunch, uh, either before or after you tour the garden. So let's take a tour of the garden. Here's one of several walk paths that you can use to walk throughout the garden. So you can check out the different uh, kind of plants that are within the garden. Now, unfortunately, they don't have any tags or signs indicating the kind of plant it is, so unfortunately, I won't be able to provide you with that information. One of the things that makes the garden special is the wonderful views of the city financial district uh, skyline in the background, as well as the city housing and Sucho Tower and many other attractions that are in the background as you're touring the garden that you can see, which is really extraordinary. We're going to get more into this later on throughout our focus here in Petrel Hill. So as you can see, as you're checking out the garden in the background, you can see a wonderful view of, it's kind of considered South San Francisco, where you see hillside uh, homes on the mountains uh, as you're looking southbound. Another garden, another phase of the garden. The garden seems to be uh, created in a series of blocks. And within each block, you'll find more plants. Here's yet another block of plants 
uh, that are within the garden with homes in the background. How you doing? Now as you're walking north through the garden, you'll see wonderful views of the San Francisco skyline. We're facing north uh, from where we're at and that's kind of downtown area. Really stunning. More fa fantastic plants within the garden. I believe that's a lemon tree. Now this area within the garden, you'll see in the background, uh, Sucho Tower. Uh, Sucho Tower is a tower that's used by the local TV stations to broadcast a signal. Now I feature the Sucho Tower when I showcase Twin Peaks, which is, offers spectacular views of the city skyline. I'll put a link in the description for my film shoot of Twin Peaks. You definitely want to check that out as well. Now towards the east end of the garden, here's a panoramic view of more of the plants. This walk path is going to take us back to the gate entrance exit. More wonderful plants within the garden. Now continuing along the walk path leading us back to the entrance gate. Now upon exiting the garden we're going to showcase the main hidden gem within the trail hill as indicated earlier which is also one of the main hidden treasures throughout the city. So now let's talk about the main hidden gem within Petrel Hill, and as I indicated before, one of the top hidden treasures in the city, and that is the 20th and Vermont Crooked Street. Now, most tourists and maybe even locals and locals in the surrounding counties only know of the Crooked Street to be Lombard Street, which is in Russian Hill. That's at the corner, begins at the corner of Hyde Street and Lombard. However, the longest crooked street in the city is right here at 20th and Vermont. Now it wiggles just like Lombard, only it's a little bit longer. And this is the this is the longest crooked street in the city. Now we're going to showcase the crooked street, and then we're going to showcase uh, how to get here, as well as taking you down the crooked street. And then there's a step well that you can also walk along the Crooked Street so that you, you can take photographs or videos, whatever you like. And it's very quiet and peaceful here, unlike, and, and nowhere near less crowded, unlike the Lombard Crooked Street. So now we're going to showcase the longest Crooked Street in the city. Again, located at 20th and Vermont. Now unfortunately, parking space is limited here if you decide to drive here to 20th and Vermont. Uh, for starters, you want to pay attention to the signage, such as no parking between 9 a.m. and 11 a.m. on Wednesdays due to street cleaning. And you must park at 90 degree angle. Uh, now if you decide to use public transit as I did today, then you can, if you're coming from, let's say, Fisherman's Wharf, you can take the F Street car all the way down to 8th Street, 8th and Market Street, and from there you would transfer over to the 19 bus line, 19 Polk, at 8th and Market Street. It's going to be on the right-hand side of 8th Street, and it'll drop you off at Rhode Island and 20th Street, which is just a few blocks, a block and a half maybe, from 20th and Vermont. You just, when you exit off of of Rhode Island and 20th Street, you just walk down 20th Street westbound. It takes you right to the corner of 20th Vermont. And of course you have the option of using the rideshare services, Uber or Lyft or taxi. I also forgot to add that if you're using public transit and you're staying at the Union Square hotels, you just walk southbound to Market Street and any street, any um, bus stop on Market Street will take you down to 8th and Market. Now I should say not all of them, 
But if you did the F Street car, which is going to be located in the middle of the street, I mentioned this in my Market Street uh, presentation, the film presentation, but nevertheless, uh, if you get to 5th and Market Street, you take the F Street car going westbound to 8th Street, and of course, as I said earlier, you would transfer to 19 Polk Street, uh, 19 Polk bus line, which is in the corner of 8th and Market. Now, this is the entrance to the Crooked Street, this is Vermont Street, and so you're going to be driving into the Crooked Street from Vermont Street. Now entering the longest crooked street, 20th and Vermont. So as you can see, the turns occur from right to left, left to right, as you enter the Vermont crooked street. Now here's a, a step well leading to a sidewalk that runs adjacent to the crooked street. We're gonna come back up the step well once we get down to the bottom of the crooked street. Yet another turn on the Crooked Street as we're turning left. Turning right on the Crooked Street. Now here's here's a cyclist coming down the Crooked hey. Street. How you doing? How are you doing? Great. So as you can see, you can also cycle down the Crooked Street. Yet another step well leading you back to the sidewalk adjacent to the Crooked Street. Now, after turning right in the crooked, on the 20th Street, Crooked Street, now we're going to turn left on the Crooked Street. And now here's a vehicle coming down the Crooked Street. So you get a chance to see what it's like to drive down the Vermont Crooked Street. Turning right again on the Vermont Crooked Street. I believe there are like three right turns, three left turns approximately. Now this would be the third exit entrance to and from the Crooked Street onto the step well on the sidewalk. Now as we turn left on the Crooked, Crooked Street, here's yet another vehicle coming down the Crooked Street. So again, you can see what it's like to drive down the Vermont Crooked Street. So you would have one more right turn on the Vermont Crooked Street before you exit the Crooked Street. And I'll show you the street that you would exit onto. So once you exit the Crooked Street, you would be on, still be on Vermont Street, but then eventually Vermont will turn into 22nd Street. So there you have it, the longest Crooked Street in the city, 20th and Vermont where you would begin at 20th and Vermont going southbound on Vermont until it ends or runs into 22nd Street and Kansas Street. Now, let's go back to the Crooked Street and I'm going to show you the step well that you can also take and observe not only views of the skyline but also the Crooked Street as well. Just before we head back to the Crooked Street, I just discovered a little mini bridge that you can uh, take that takes you right over the highway. Uh, I wanted to emphasize the many bridges that we have here throughout the city. So it begins at 22nd Street and I'll show you here in a minute. So right when you exit out of the Crooked Street, to your right you'll see the step well. That, as I mentioned earlier, it runs parallel or adjacent to the Crooked Street. Now this allows you to 
to watch, take photos and videos of the Crooked Street, as well as you look to the west, you'll see wonderful views of the San Francisco skyline, uh, as well as Sutro Tower, and many, other, many more scenic views. Here's someone coming down the step wall right now. So here's the step well up close, and this is one of several mini step wells throughout the city that we're going to feature as we showcase many of the neighborhoods within the city. Continuing our journey up the step well. This step well is a little broken and uneven. It does have areas where it's going to be a little harder to hike up, so you might want to have good hiking shoes when you're walking up this particular step well. Now this concludes our feature of the longest Turkish street in the city. And now we're back to 20th Avermont. I'm going to show you all the wonderful, fabulous points of interest and hidden treasures within Patrol Hill. Starting off with McKinney Park, which is adjacent to the entrance to the Crooked Street, which is at 20th and Vermont. Now here's a panoramic view of McKinney Park. This is an area that has a playground in it, so if you have family, children, you can bring your children to have a, a swing, a slide, and I'll show you some of those amenities in a minute. Here's a convenient water faucet, so those of you that may get dehydrated, you can uh, have some water to drink. A nice waste disposable helps keep the city clean and keep you from littering. One of the things that's special about McKinney Park is to sit early, you have the swings that you can swing with your children, but also you get a spectacular view of the San Francisco skyline as well. More amenities of McKinney Park includes a, a slide and some hand handrails and a few more of the slides as well on the side there. I'll show you here. One final shot of the playground. Now as we exit McKinney Park and also the Crooked Street at 20th and Vermont, we're going to continue our journey on finding more hidden gems within Patrol Hill by going eastbound on 20th Street. And one of the things you're going to find the specials within each block as you explore the neighborhoods, when you get to the corner, look to your left, left, look to your right, look north, south, east, west, and you're going to see something really spectacular, either uh, a view of the uh, San Francisco downtown skyline as we are right now, or you might see a view of the hills, whatever it might be. Whenever you get to the street corner, always look to your left and your right, and you'll probably find something really spectacular to watch and view. So this is a classic example. When you get into the, particularly as you cross the street and you're at the street corner, we're still at the corner of 20 Vermont, you're gonna see even up close or a better view of the city skyline, downtown city skyline, as well as the hill as it is going downward. For instance, we're at the highest peak of Patrol Hill at 20th Street. From this point on, we're going to be working our way going down the hill as we feature more of the hidden treasures within Patrol Hill. So we're, at, we're going to be walking on the 22nd, 2200 block of 20th Street going eastbound. Now we're at the, we're going to be approaching the 21st Street block of 20th Street. Now I'm going to be emphasizing the numbered block uh, throughout the neighborhood as I did and if you watched my film shoot of Market Street. I want to show you the significance of how the streets are aligned so that you always know where you're at and you can easily find uh, an establishment, either a business or a friend's resident or even an attraction. Uh, so that's why I'm going to be emphasizing the numbered block as we move along. 
The other thing about the number of how the streets are aligned here in the city is that one side of the street will be even numbered, the other side will be odd numbered. And that's another way how you can help find your location point, especially if you're going to be using any ride sharing services like Uber or Lyft. Sometimes the driver will ask you, where's your location? So with the arm with this information, you'll be able to plug in the address of your exact location so that you'll be easily, easily found. So I'm going to show you the different numbered streets here in a minute, number, number of residences. I'll show you the difference between odd versus even. Now approaching the 1900 block of 20th Street, the cross street is De Harrell. Now here at the corner of De Harrell and 20th, you'll be able to see a spectacular view of the Bay Bridge and the San Francisco skyline. Now you're going to be looking northbound when you're viewing the San Francisco skyline and the Bay Bridge. So let's see what, what we'll be able to view looking eastbound. So here's yet another wonderful view of the San Francisco skyline while still at the corner of 20th and the Harrow, only I'm at a different segment of the corner of 20th and Harrow. So that's what I mean. You know, you'll be able to see a lot at the corners of these blocks. Now when looking eastbound at the corner of the Harrow and 20th, the view of the bay isn't as good. So as you can see, it's going to vary from block to block what you might be able to see. Now we're going, well, we're at the 800, 1800 block of 20th Street. The cross street is Carolina. Now let me show you another uh, hidden gem that's uh, pretty much all throughout the city, but it's very significant when you're walking throughout the city. So what I was referring to is the step well. This particular step well is going to take you down to the next block that runs parallel to 20th Street, which is 19th Street. And step wells pretty much allow you to connect from one block or street to the next. And you'll see these step wells all throughout the city. In fact, I think there was a woman that did a book, wrote a book on all the step wells in the city. It's like 10,000 of them. And some of them are, are very nice in architectural design. And some of them are just kind of plain like this, plain like this one. But um, we'll get into a lot more step wells as well as we film throughout the city. So here again at the corner of 20th and Carolina, now if you're looking south, you'll see that there's a very steep hill and that the cars are parked parallel. And that's one of the things you have to consider when driving throughout the city, you're visiting a private resident, is, is how you should park your car. Uh, in this particular case, the cars must be parked uh, horizontally, parallel. So now we're at the 1700 block of 20th Street. The cross street is Wisconsin. And at this corner, I'm going to show you another amazing view looking eastbound, or northbound, I'm sorry, uh, at the Financial District Unit, um, as well as the Bay Bridge. One moment. Now we're approaching the 1700 block of 20th Street, the cross street of Wisconsin. And I've got another amazing treat to show you as well. But before I do that, let me show you how what you can expect to see if you were looking uh, southbound at this corner. So like I mentioned that our previous block, Carolina Street and 20th, uh, same scenario applies. If you're driving in a parking in, the, in a, many of the residential areas, 
uh, you, at times you may be required to park parallel. In this case, the sign says park at 90 degrees. So let me show you how you should park at a 90 degree angle right here. So there's your 90 degree angle for parking. So here again at the corner of Wisconsin and 20th, you're going to see looking east northbound another spectacular view of the San Francisco skyline and the Bay Bridge. Absolutely stunning. And on a clear day like this, it's even more amazing. So as you can see, just on the same corner of Wisconsin and 20th Street, uh, just by moving slightly from one end of the corner to the other, you'll be able to see even more of the San Francisco skyline, which is also still extraordinary. In many cases, when you are driving, or especially if you're walking throughout the various neighborhoods, you'll come upon a street corner where there's no signage indicating or identifying the, the title of the street. Now, whenever that happens, you come to the street corner and on the sidewalk, you'll be able to identify the title of the street. Now, in this case, uh, as we're going eastbound, this is 20th Street. And then let me show you the identification of Wisconsin Street. So here's the title of Wisconsin Street which is, as I said earlier, on the sidewalk. Now, Wisconsin is going to be running north-south as it crosses 20th Street, which is running east-west. One of the things that's special about walking throughout the neighborhoods in the city, especially during the Halloween season, is you get a chance to see all the uh, creative decorations that many residents have done in celebrating Halloween. And this one's a pretty good one right here, showing the spider and the spider web. I think they got another one here on their on the outside exterior of the home as well. Let me show you that one. So here's yet another Halloween decoration, uh, which is pretty nice on the same home. Okay, continuing our journey going eastbound on 20th Street. So now we're entering the 1600 block of 20th Street. The cross street is Arkansas. And one of the things you probably, if you haven't noticed already, the special about the streets, many of the streets that are named in Patrol Hills are named after the southern states within the United States. Now there are many bus stops signs that are located throughout the city and one way how to find them is when you look on some of the poles. Um, unfortunately, they're they're indicated at different segments of each specific block. For instance, some in this particular case, the street sign is on the pole, but in some cases, they've created a separate sign exclusively for the public transit stop. But this is important to know in terms of how to be able to find the bus stop for the bus line you're trying to take. And in some cases, they're gonna be, uh, they're gonna have their own stand and they're going to be more easily able to easily to be identified. In other cases, they're going to be on these poles, and so you got to know how to look for them to find them. Well, one of the things also that's special about traveling through these uh, unique, wonderful neighborhoods in our city is there are several shops and even restaurants that are within the neighborhoods. And here's a hair salon called the Fleur Hair and Nail Spa and they do a complete hair and nail spa of Patrol Hill and the, neighbor, the neighbor's residence. And they're located at 1701 20th Street, right here in the corner of Arkansas and 20th. Now, Thinker's Cafe offers espresso drinks, beer and wine in a nice setting with outdoor seating as well. They're located at 1631 20th Street. All State's Best Foods offers fresh produce, including cheeses, juices, water, and bread. They're located at 1607 20th Street. Now approaching the 1500 block of 20th Street, the cross street is Connecticut. Now approaching the 14th block of 20th Street, 
the cross street is Missouri. So it's not only the southern states that you'll find that are listed within Petrero Hill, but also the eastern states and the midwestern states that are named, uh, the streets that are named after these particular types of states within the United States. Now approaching the 1300 block of 20th Street, the cross street is Texas. Now I've got a special treat to show you here that I think you're really gonna love. So at the corner of, of 20th Street and Texas, looking southbound, you'll see wonderful view of the homes, hillside homes in the background. But also, you'll see Highway 280 as well. And I mentioned earlier about the differences between using Highway 280 versus Highway 101 when you're coming in and out of the city, coming to and from the San Francisco airport, for example. We'll, get, we'll talk more about Highway 280 as we approach it going eastbound on 20th Street. Now approaching the 1200 block of 20th Street, the cross street is Mississippi. Now, this particular intersection has got some major treats on it that I've yet to see on any of the blocks of the intersections that we have crossed since coming down 20th going coming down 20th going eastbound. For example, looking southbound at the corner of 20th and Mississippi you're going to see a better view of Highway 280 as well as the hillside homes. Now looking northbound the corner of 20th and Mississippi is another wonderful view of the San Francisco skyline. And finally looking southbound at the corner of 20th and Mississippi, excuse me, eastbound at the corner of 20th and Mississippi, you'll see a spectacular view of the San Pablo Bay, one that we saw earlier when we started our journey on 20th, at 20th in Vermont. And again, you can see the container ships in the background and the view of the East Bay and the Port of Oakland. So this is what's special about this particular intersection is that in each direction, looking southbound, eastbound, or northbound, there are wonderful views of of the entire bay. Now approaching the 1100 block of 20th Street, the cross street is Pennsylvania. Now here's some important information you need to know about parking in the city, especially when you come to any one of our neighborhoods, and that is the street parking is limited unless you own one of the permits that usually locals have it gives them the right to park uh, in their parking spot. So if you look at the signage here, you'll see is two hour parking from 8 a.m. to 6 p.m. Monday through Friday, except vehicles with area X permits. That means that any local that has the X permit is entitled to park at their designated area, you know, anytime they would like. Whereas in your case, you have a limited amount of time to park within the area. Uh, also don't forget to park at 90 degrees, as we mentioned earlier. And one final thing, uh, there's no parking between 8 a.m. and 10 a.m. on Mondays due to street cleaning. So that means that even if you have the permit, if your car is parked out here during that time span, it's gonna get towed. So again, you always want to pay attention to the signage whenever street parking within the city. Now approaching the 700 block of 20th Street. Now we're in the, the sub-neighborhood, it's called Dog Patch. It's kind of like a sub-neighborhood of Petrero Hill. 
you find several of these neighborhoods that are inside the main neighborhood within the city. For instance, South Beach is a, a mini pocketer type of neighborhood like dog patches to Petrero Hill, but South Beach is also within the neighborhood of, of South of Market. And South of Market is a larger, bigger neighborhood that includes these sub neighborhoods, just like Dog Patch is kind of like a sub neighborhood to Petrero Hill. Now, this sub neighborhood of, of Dog Patch covers the radius of, let's say, west, looking to the west, Highway 280, which we just crossed. To the north would be 16th Street. To the east would be 3rd Street towards the water, the bay. And then towards the south would be Cesar Chavez. So let's continue our journey on 20th Street eastbound as we're in the sub neighborhood of Dog Patch. The cross street is Tennessee. As I mentioned earlier, you're going to find more dining options uh, within Dog Patch than you will in Petrel Hill. Now here at the corner of 20th, the 700 block of 20th and 3rd Street. 3rd Street is where you'll find many of the, your dining options and also boutique shops as well. 3rd Street runs very long. It runs through several neighborhoods. Literally all the way from Soma, as I mentioned earlier, south of Market, all the way down to uh, Bayview's Hunters Point. But it's also a part of Dog Patch. And I want to show you a few attractions in Dog Patch near the waterfront if it's not been closed off just yet. Well, it appears as though there's construction work going on as we move further east on 20th Street near the water. So unfortunately, I won't be able to show you some hidden gems here. But uh, we will continue our journey uh, through Dog Patch as we head back towards the heart of Patrol Hill. Okay, now we're going uh, northbound on Illinois Street up to 19th Street. And then I'm going to try to see if I can take you towards the, the waterfront area. Because uh, there's like some miniature parks that's within the dog patch area. I'm going to show you that before we head back uh, westbound towards uh, the heart of Patrol Hill. Uh, one of the things that's special about uh, cycling in the city is that Many streets have bike lanes that is designated for cyclists. So if you like to cycle, then you certainly want to take advantage of the bike lane. And I mentioned in my Market Street film shoot, the, the long bike lane, the wider bike lane that's available there on Market Street. This one's a smaller bike lane. It's on Illinois Street. Uh, Illinois Street is not a very long street, but nevertheless, as you can see, it does have a nice convenient bike lane. And the bike lane is on both sides of the street as well. So it's not only for cyclists, you have uh, electric kick scooters and many other uh, small type of uh, I should say the recreational cycling facilities uh, that can be used in conjunction to using the bike lane. Now we're at the corner of 19th Street in Illinois and I'm going to see if I can take you uh, a bit further eastbound on 19th Street as I believe there's a park, a miniature park in the area, but there's lots of construction that's been going on since the last time I've been here. So uh, let's see if we can get into the area where there's a park at, or another point of interest recreational facility. I believe this is the entrance to the park, but I'm not 100% certain as I've not been in this area before. So let's check it out and see. Correction, this is a construction zone area and I don't believe it's prohibited by uh, anyone that's not involved in the construction of the facility. I think the entrance is on 18th Street. Yes, there's definitely a park in the area. It's called the Crane Cove Park. Uh, unfortunately, the entrance is, I believe, on 18th Street and uh, Illinois, and not on 19th Street, Illinois. So let's go back up to Illinois Street and then I'll show you the entrance to the park. So we're going to be continuing our journey going northbound on Illinois Street to 18th Street and that's where you'll find the entrance to the park.
Okay, so here's the entrance to Crane Crow Park, which is at the corner of the 700 block of Illinois at 19th Street, 18th Street, I'm sorry. Now they do have some pet rules. All pets must be on a leash and they want you to clean up after your pet. So here's the picnic area of Crane Cove Park. Here's a panoramic view of Crane Cove Park, primarily the grass area, which is pretty nice. It's a great way to relax, unwind with your family and friends, or if you're single on your own. It's got a nice shade from the buildings to the east. Another panoramic view of Crane Cove Park. I said earlier, primarily the grass area. Some individual shots of Crane Cove Park. I'm not certain what that is in standing in front of us. Some of the architecture within the city is kind of historic, so they keep a lot of it like cranes that were used for uh, the ships that came in. Now the ships go over to Oakland, but we did have um, container ships that came into San Francisco. And some of these are crane ships that are no longer used anymore. Crane containers, that use them, they don't use them anymore. So yeah, that's, I guess that's why the park is named Crane Cove Park. This is where the cranes were used when the ships came in, container ships came in. They came into San Francisco initially. I guess that's probably one of the cranes that they use. There's one, there's a few more here I see as well along the waterfront. But as I said earlier, now all the container ships go over to Oakland. And I'll show you where their cranes are at as well. You can see them up close when you get close to the water here. Now I can only assume that this particular road was used to after the ships came in and the cranes transported the supplies that they probably used this road to transport the supplies onto maybe trucks or whatnot and the trucks take them out to different parts of the Bay Area or the country. I'm speculating. But. So that's what it looks like here. This is where the ships came in. Some of these piers in the city and the cranes then boarded the supplies. Let's take a closer look. So yeah, you can see that looks like a crane. One of the cranes that we use along the pier here in the city. If you look to your right, you'll see a few more of them here. Uh, when the ships came into San Francisco. Now let me show you the Port of Oakland. You'll see all the cranes that are white colored. That's where all the ships come in now. Container ships come in throughout the world. They're going over to Oakland. So if you look now to your left, you'll see all the container ships. The cranes that are currently taking the ships coming in from all throughout the world. Now here's an up close shot at all the, the cranes that are uh, that are located over in East Oakland. Behind the hills, there are the hills there behind the cranes, that's East Oakland. Uh, but nevertheless, and if you look further to your left, you'll see the Bay Bridge, which connects you right to San Francisco. So if you're coming from, let's say, the Oakland Airport, you'd be taking the Bay Bridge into, into the city. Now here's more views of the beach at Crane Cove Park. It's kind of like a small miniature beach. Not much water activity. But it appears as though you may be able to wade in the water. Let's take a closer look. So here's a real up close view of the water at Crane Cove Park. Here's a panoramic view of the beach. Now here's a few waste disposals designed to help the city clean. So. You want to make certain that all your waste is disposed into the garbage cans. Now also, if you look closer to the garbage can on the right, 
you'll see there's a cigarette lighter hole. A cigarette hole, actually, what it is. So that's where you can dispose of your cigarette as opposed to on the ground. So you see a lot of these waste disposals all throughout the city. So this is what you want to look for whenever you're, if you, if you do smoke and you're looking for a way to dispose of your cigarette and you see one of these garbage cans, look for that cigarette hole within the garbage can. Now here's a bike rack for those of you that are cycling throughout the city or throughout Percheryl Hill. Um, you come to the park, they got about, I think about eight, one, two, three, four, about eight different bike racks that you can use to park your bike as you relax and enjoy the park. I believe these are like some replicant statues of some of the facilities that were used when the cranes were in operation. That's what it seems like. I'll try to see if I can find out what they are exactly. But you'll see a lot of these throughout the city and also different parts of the Bay Area where they're, they try to replicate tools that were used during the you know, early 1900s to early 1800s. So what I gathered online is Queen Cove Park was part of a ship building facility that they used to build ships as well. So these, this, these statues are probably replicants of the ship building materials and tools that they used to build the ships. Sure, as I mentioned earlier, ships also came into the park area as well. Uh, container ships, that is. Here's one final shot of the statue. Uh, I also learned online that this is a part of the Pier 70 project, uh, I guess, of a redevelopment. And Pier 70, anything along the waterfront is part of the Port of Oakland, Port of San Francisco, I'm sorry and it's next to any one of the piers. So in my previous shoots of the Embarcadero, I emphasize all the piers that are along the waterfront. This particular pier is, is south of the Embarcadero. But as I mentioned earlier, as we're in the heart of a dog patch. Dog patch is, the pier is part of the dog patch neighborhood, which of course is a part of the trail hill. Now this concludes our phase one journey of Patrell Hill. I hope you enjoy the, the Crooked Street, the actual longest Crooked Street in the city, 20th and Vermont. Uh, I hope you enjoy the scenic views of the, of the skyline uh, of the San Pablo Bay, of the homes on the hill the South Bay, south of San Francisco. I hope you enjoyed the gardens. And I hope you enjoyed the significance of learning how the streets are numbered, how they are aligned. And I hope you enjoy the significance also of identifying how, where, and when to find the scenic views as you approach each intersection while walking throughout the neighborhood at the street corner. And uh, I hope you enjoy the information on the highways, the highway, especially Highway 280, how it can be used uh, as an effective tool for saving time while traveling to and from the city, to and from the airport. And of course, finally, I hope you enjoyed the, the views of the park, Crane Cove Park, as well as the options for having picnics, wading in the water, and walking your dog, and anything else you want to do within the park. That being the case, if you like what you learned and what you saw, I appreciate if you would subscribe, like, comment, and share my channel. Uh, I appreciate it if you would log on to my website. That's P A Parrec, P A I R R E C dot com, where you can visit my blog and get more of the details about my adventures throughout the San Francisco Bay Area. And also subscribe to the newsletter, where you'll get 
uh, new discounts and promotions on wine tasting and lodging, dining, parking, tours and attractions and much more. And also, don't forget to uh, log on to my other uh, film shoots where I showcase the financial district here in San Francisco, market district in San Francisco. I also feature the scenic drive from San Francisco down to Mount Array on Highway 1. Uh, I've also featured film shoots on visiting wine country in Sonoma and in Napa Valley. And also, um, take advantage of the new feature that was issued by YouTube about four months ago, and that is the use of timestamps that I put in my description that will help you identify the, um, the specific area of interest within the video clip. And it's called chapters. So there are chapters that are within the video clip that you can find in timestamps which are located in the description. So you just click on any one of those timestamps and you'll be able to go to any specific area of interest that you have within the video. Uh, with that being the case, don't forget to tune in to phase two of Patrol Hills. We're going to continue our journey going westbound on 19th Street uh, back to to where pretty much where the Crooked Street was at 20th and Vermont. So essentially we're going to work our way throughout Patrol Hill, uh, going visiting all the various streets because there's a lot more hidden treasures that I'm going to share with you throughout Patrol Hill. And uh, this is just one, this park area, by the way, is just one of many. With that being the case, have a nice day and we'll see you on the next journey. Goodbye.